When the Steam Deck launched, it hit a sweet spot in between price and performance. And depending on which budget you had, you could go ahead and invest and buy a Steam Deck for yourself and eventually get little upgrades to go ahead and make the Steam Deck experience better for yourself. Now, that's not to say that other companies have not cloned the Steam Deck and have made their own version of it, albeit with a better APU, but also with a higher price point. This is something that is essentially the uh, balancing act between figuring out what you can shove into a handheld and the price that the market will agree is acceptable. Now, Steam for $400, you can buy a Steam Deck. And yes, I still believe that to this day, this is a loss leader for them. They aren't able to essentially make these at the price that they're selling it. In fact, I see them as a way to get Steam Deck users to Steam to purchase more games to play on the go. That being said, with Asus and the ROG Ally that they gave to two channels, I think that this is a potential for them to actually make something that is competitive to the Steam Deck. Earlier today, I post a survey asking what you all thought was going to be the price point for the ROG Ally. And I put it between $400 and $800 because this is going to be competing directly with the Steam Deck. Yes, the Aya Neo Pro or whatever the heck is out there is there. It is very expensive. And yes, the performance is there. But for the average consumer, somebody that is looking for an addition to what they have on their PC, this is going to be something that is competing against a Steam Deck. Now, if you look at Steam right now, the most popular GPU that's out there is a 3060. So that will give you an idea in terms of what the average price point is for gamers in today's market. Let's talk about some of the things that we do know. We do know that it's going to be a custom four nanometer AMD APU that is going to be based on the Zen 4 architecture and is going to have RDNA 3. No matter how you cut it, that is a step up in comparison to the Steam Deck, which means that yes, chances are things are going to be a little bit pricier with the Ally in comparison to the Steam Deck. There's no doubt about that. On top of it being more powerful, it is going to be available worldwide. There's going to be a global release for the Ally, which means that this is something that get into hands of potential gamers that want to pay that premium price no matter what. And I think that this is mainly because of the fact that Asus already has their distribution set up. They have the logistics side of things already set and done. Valve, on the other hand, has always had uh, some issues when it comes to their hardware overall. The fact that the Steam Deck has rolled out in a successful manner is proof that they are taking things seriously and they are rolling out things in a successful manner with as little hitches as possible. That's not to say that it's perfect, but it is getting there. The Ally is going to have a seven inch 16 by nine ratio screen that can produce a 1920 by 1080p image and has a 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now it can reach all the way up to 500 nits of brightness. And in comparison to the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck has a 16 by 10 ratio, can do 1280 by 800 and has 60 Hertz refresh rate and can hit 400 nits. I do think that I like the extra refresh rate on the Ally and I do like the fact that it can get a little bit brighter, but when it comes down to it, if you're looking at something that's a handheld and you can control the amount of Hertz refresh rate that is there on the handheld, then you also have to consider how much power is being drawn from the battery. Based off of everything that we've seen online, it seems like the battery consumption, albeit it's up in the air because we don't know how the final model is going to come out, is still something that might be similar to the Steam Deck. We might get one to two hours, maybe three, if we're playing something that is less taxing. And if you're talking about 2D games, you might get five-ish hours overall. And it just, I wish that we had much more options for flexibility and being able to adjust things and tweak settings so that we meet the needs that we want for our individual games. I did see while looking at the previews that there were in-game overlays or kind of just ways to adjust the settings and make them specific towards the games themselves. I hope that this is something that Asus goes ahead and implements into the final build of the product. Obviously, this is going to be a different OS. Steam Deck has its operating system, the Steam OS, but when it comes to the Ally, you're going to be running Windows, but it allows for a little bit more flexibility if you're used to running on Windows. Not only that, but you should also be able to run multiple different launchers. You won't have issues with Xbox Game Pass or Epic or Steam. Honestly, you're able to run all of those things without any issues because Windows is ran natively on the handheld. 
I've never been a fan of the Asus Armor Crate UI or the way that the software is set up overall. I have a Zephyrus G15 that I use for mobile work or mobile editing for my day job, and I have plenty of stuff in my rig that is from Asus. But at the end of the day, I've just when it comes to the OS, I'm just not a big fan of it. So I do hope that they allow for a little bit more customization and they take the user's experience into account in order to make sure that things are where they need to be or wherever they feel right at home so that I'm not sitting here going through menus continuously trying to figure out how to adjust things or get things going. This is a mobile experience first, at least that's the way that I see it. So speed and being able to use things quickly and get them done is important for me. And I hope that Asus does something similar to that. If not, I'm sure that the community will go ahead and create some mods similar to like Decky Loader on the Steam Deck that will allow for customization and being able to get things done just right so that you don't have to end up looking for them in a multitude of menus. One of my biggest gripes with the Steam Deck was the fan noise. And it makes sense because you're playing a handheld PC and if a game is taxing, it's just going to create more heat and it's going to have a louder fan. When it comes down to it though, Asus took the ally and said, you know what, let's put two fans in there and keep things as cool as possible. The ending result, at least according to the previews, is that the fan noise is half is loud. So that means it's half as quiet, which is almost kind of insane because in some instances, the fan noise with the Steam Deck, again, depending on the games that you play, if they're 2D and they're not super taxing, it's not that big of a nuisance. It's really when I'm playing the 3D complex titles that it becomes very, very obvious that the fan is working hard. My hope is that things just remain quiet even when you're having a heavy load on the Ally, but again, we won't really know until it's actually in our hands but based off of the previews, it looks like it's relatively solid. Whenever you're looking at the Steam Deck, you have to take into account that there is a dockability factor to it. You're able to essentially dock this and connect it to a monitor or a television and play the games that are on the handheld on a larger screen. With the Ally, Asus looked at it and said, you know what, let's get the XG mobile units that are out there and use that to superpower whatever is happening on the handheld and display that on a larger screen, whether it's 4K, 1080, whatever it may be. Now, I looked into it and the price point is kind of, it stings a little bit. You're looking at around $2,000 for a 4090 eGPU. And this isn't the same GPU that you would put in a regular desktop. This is the GPU that you would find in a laptop. This is the mobile unit that's there. And that begs whether or not this is something that is worth it. Now for hardcore gamers that are out there that want to go ahead and have a handheld experience that can also be translated easily into the big screen by just connecting straight into the handheld, this is a great option. But for me personally, I just don't see this as something that I would get for myself. The Ally on the other hand, if Asus goes ahead and gets the right price point for it, is something that I could definitely see you know, potentially checking out and testing out, not just for the channel, but just to be able to play on the go. I've had such a great experience with the Steam Deck and the ease of use with the Steam Deck that taking a handheld that is a little bit more powerful, a little bit quieter, and has a similar battery life, at least based off of what we've seen online, is something that I really truly think has the potential to make waves in the market. If Asus can get the price point to around 500, 600, maybe $700 with the Ally, I think that this is something that could really make Ways within the market. Obviously, we don't know what variations there are going to be out there. We don't even know if this is going to be the final look for the system itself. There could be different internals. There could be different storage options. There could be different accessories that come depending on which model you go for. But overall, this is interesting, not because of the fact that this is competing with the Steam Deck, but also because this is going to go into brick and mortar stores. So if you go to Best Buy, you'll be able to see it there and you'll be able to try it out, see how it feels. And I think that this is very, very intriguing. Regardless, Regardless though, I think that this is a huge opportunity for Asus to make waves within the market, like I've said before, but I really wanna hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below, how much you think this is going to cost and whether or not this is something that is worth it in comparison to the Steam Deck. Is this something that could potentially overshadow the Steam Deck and take some of that market share away from Valve? If you wanna hear my thoughts on the Steam Deck after having it for five months, click this video over here and I will see you on the next one. Until next time guys, peace.